Now moving on to clustering performance evaluation. So a note here that previously in the supervised learning class where we looked at class evaluation of classification, we did have the predicted values and the true values that we could compare against. Uh, however, in case of uh, in case of unsupervised learning methods, we don't have that convenience. So we do not have the Y test that we can check against to see if the Y pred is good or bad. So the idea then is to, in case of unsupervised, is to either manually label some of part of the data set to just to evaluate the model. That's uh, just one thought because uh, the methods that we are going to see now do require, most of them do require a true label and a predicted uh, label from the model. The very first one is RAND I index. So there are two part two varieties of this, unadjusted and adjusted. So the adjusted index is calculated by this relation here we have a plus b so a is the number of uh, pair of elements that are in the same set as c same set in c and in same set as k so we have the truth which could have been the y test and the clustering which would be the y pred so we look at the number of elements in both of them then b is uh, different sets in C, so the number of pair of elements that are in different sets in C and in different sets in K. And then in the denominator, we have the total number of possible pairs in the data set. Now, uh, this particular value for RAN index RI a can be adjusted by subtracting this expected RI value from uh, the numerator as well as numerator and then dividing it by this term right here max ri minus the expected value and here are a couple of examples so first thing to note in the top right corner is that the score for unadjusted value lies between 0 and 1 1 being good 0 being not good and the adjusted uh, score can be negative so it can go below zero and on the other side it will be up to one so here we have two types of two labels true and predicted we have zero 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 one 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 zero zero one one two two so this label is different and these uh, these are different right here so we have in predicted we have one two and three clusters and in the true we just have two so when we calculate the rand score and adjusted rand score we get 0.66 and 0.24 values now the one of the beauty of these metrics is that we can uh, if the labels are swapped it does not affect the calculated value so if you run it again and if the same cluster gets a different label that uh, the values still stay the same. At least that's what I'm interpreting here. So here, instead of 0, 0, we have 2, 2, and instead of 2, 2, here we have 3, 3. And when we run this, uh, we get the same values as before. Now, in case of poorly matched labels, so let's say the predicted model is way off, then the RAND score still is at 0.46, but then the adjusted score does go in the negative range. So we have minus 0 0.11. And for perfectly matched, where the, the labels match uh, uh, perfectly, then other values are 1, 1, that's the max values. The next step is information-based scores. And here, this uses entropy. So there are two entropies calculated on this slide. One is the for objects that are labeled u and labeled v so h of u and h of v and it is given by this relation right here negative sum of i to u 
probability of i into log of probability of i where the probability of i itself is given by mod of ui divided by n which is probability that the object picked at random from u falls into the class ui and same thing for uh, the probability p dash j when we are talking about the label v and the mutual information mi then is given by this relation uh, if we are not using entropy yet uh, but we'll see that soon so uh, a summation from i to u sum of j to v again we have this uh, entropy term that we have here p of i into log p of i and p of i j then can be rewritten uh, in these terms uh, u which is probability that the object picked can fall into both ui and vj so we have this sign that indicates ui and vj and finally the normalized mutual information then is given by this mi divided by the mean of the entropies of u and v and now on this slide we have uh, we are calculating again the adjusted value for the mutual index mutual information index and for that we need the expected value and that expected value is calculated by this uh, equation shown up top here and Again, similar to the RAND index, we have this E expected value subtracted from the numerator MI and the mean value in the denominator. And now let's look at some examples of uh, this course. So on the top right hand side, we can again see that the value uh, is max is one, minimum can be zero or negative for the adjusted value. If we have these labels as shown here, then the adjusted score is 0 0.29. If we have labels that are different, the score does not change, it's still 0 0.29. If the samples are poorly matched, then we get a negative value for the adjusted score. And if they're perfectly matched, uh, we do get one for the adjusted score, but very important to remember that for the mutual info score, we still get a value that is not one. We get 0 0.69. Now moving on to homogeneity, completeness, and V measure. So the V measure is calculated by this relation, which is homogeneity into completeness divided by homogeneity plus completeness. And to this, this beta term is added. And that is just to add weight to either homogeneity or part of the equation or the completeness part of the equation. The V measure is again uh, shown here by this relation. V is equal to two into H dot C divided by H plus C, which is the homogeneity and completeness. And it can be calculated based on the conditional entropy as shown here the conditional entropy of classes C given cluster K is given by this relation and uh, entropy of uh, classes C is given by this particular relation right here. And again, this is a busy slide, but we'll step through this one by one. On the top right corner, we can see that the score is in the range of zero to one, one being good. And if we look at the labels, the original labels, we have the homogeneity score, completeness score, V measure score, and these are the values shown here. If the labels are swapped, the values still are the same. If the labels are poorly matched, then the values are uh, lower. So from 0.6, we go down to 0.49, 0.42 we go down to 0.25 and from 0.51 we go down to 0.33 and if the samples are perfectly matched then the values are one again we can change the beta level so if we 
set the beta level to 0 0.6 we get the value which is 0.454 and if it's 1.8 we get value of 0.48 and point to note here is that if we uh, increase the value of beta uh, which defaults to 1 we are increasing the value of uh, homogeneity if we make this 2 we are doubling the value of homogeneity and so that's uh, that's the takeaway message from that and if we compute the we can also compute the values for homogeneity completeness and v measure together in just one line by specifying homogeneity underscore completeness underscore v underscore measure and we get all these three values calculated at once and finally and there are these two cases where uh, we have a uh, set where the labels are homogeneous but not complete so as we can see the score for homogeneity is one but for completeness it is still uh, 0.68 and in the second case we have uh, the situation where uh, the labels are complete but not homogeneous so we have 0 0.52 for homogeneity and we have one for completeness now moving on let's look at what is uh, what are true positive true negative false positive and false negative let's say we have apples and oranges we have 12 apples 15 oranges and we have some model that predicts this particular class uh, whether that sample is an apple or an orange and let's say this is the output of that model where the actual class is right here and the predicted class have up on the as a column now you'll see different versions of this sometimes the true positive is put here in the bottom right corner sometimes the predicted class is put on the left hand side whereas the actual class is put on the right top up here but uh, it shouldn't matter as long as these are in place so what this tells us is that uh, the actual class for the actual class apple there are 12 apples out of which 10 were correctly identified and two were incorrectly identified as orange similarly there were 15 oranges out of which 10 were correctly identified as oranges but then five were um, uh, incorrectly identified as apples so these diagonal elements in the confusion this is a confusion matrix so the diagonal elements in the confusion matrix uh, tell mm, the correct predictions and the off diagonal elements tell the incorrect predictions so in case if the off diagonal elements are zero it means that all the predictions are correct now this particular score of folks mallows uh, probably didn't pronounce it correctly is given by this particular uh, relation which as true positive in the numerator divided by square root of the um, product of uh, true positive plus uh, false positive and true positive plus false negative and if we look at the values computed by this score we see that uh, for the labels original labels we have 0.47 swapped labels are different labels we still have the same 0.47 poorly matched labels we get a zero and perfectly matched labels we get a one so again one is good next there is something called a silhouette coefficient it is given by this relation b minus a divided max of b and a so where a is the mean distance between the sample and all other points in the class whereas b is the mean distance between sample and all other points in the nearest cluster so this particular method is trying to uh, find out how the proximity of points within a cluster within a cluster and uh, cluster that may be nearby 
and this is shown here in this plot so we have this one cluster down here and the second one here again there is one here one here one here one here and the score silhouette score is 0 0.47 for this one and it increases to 0.98 for this one so the reason why it probably increases is because we have a dense cluster for one thing and the second is they are well separated if they were close together then it was still in 0.9 range but um, it was this is much higher so we have 0.92 versus 0.98 and below down here we have the code snippet for that next this is the kalinsky harabaz index which is given by this relation right here where s is equal to the trace of um, trace between group disc dispersion matrix and trace within cluster dispersion matrix multiplied by this fraction here where any is the data e uh, of size any and k is the clusters and then each of these traces can be found by these relations shown here for bk and wk if we plot the values again the same data points that we saw earlier uh, as the points are denser and spread far apart the value increases so higher value is good here we can see the values increase from 8 to almost 3500 in this particular case next we have the davies boldin index given by this relation which is 1 by k into sum of max of rij which is given in turn by this relation si plus sj divided by dij so si is the average distance between each point of a cluster i and the centroid of that cluster and then the d dij is the distance between the cluster centroids i and j so two clusters centroids and again in this case it's the interpretation of the score is swap is flipped so lower score is better higher score is not good so here these cluster these clusters we have a value of 0.5 whereas these densely packed uh, spread apart clusters have a very small value close to 0 0.02 next we have a contingency matrix so in this case let's say we have x which is shown by three uh three uh, six uh, six items in there uh, a's and three a's and three b's and then y which is a predicted values we have three clusters instead of two uh, original was two but now we have three so we can create a contingency matrix which, which kind of tells how uh, the spread of the true versus the predicted cluster so here for example we can see that out of these three a's two are assigned to cluster one predicted cluster one and one was assigned to predicted cluster o. sorry two were assigned to predicted cluster zero and one was assigned to predicted cluster one and nothing was assigned to predicted cluster two and so on for the b's one uh, nothing was assigned to predicted cluster zero whereas uh, one was assigned to predicted cluster one and then two were assigned to predictor cluster uh, number two label two uh, along the same lines we have as we saw the confusion matrix earlier so this is another uh, implementation of that which is pair confusion matrix so we have again now as we saw before we had true positive here but this one is flipped so we have true positive at bottom right corner true negative is on the top left corner and then we have false positive and false negative so what c00 means that the number of pairs 
with both clusterings having the same having the samples not clustered together that's c00 and then the number of pairs with both clusterings having the samples clustered together is uh, c11 so not clustered together here and clustered together here and then these are the off diagonal elements uh, one example that is we have these two uh, values shown here for the labels and we calculate the pair confusion matrix uh, values then we get this particular output and if we have this particular case then again for the pair confusion matrix we get this output so in this case these are perfectly matched so the off diagonal elements are zero here they are not perfectly matched and so we do have values that are non-zero in the off diagonal elements so that was it for this video i hope this video gave you some intuition about uh, the different clustering methods that are available with scikit-learn uh, how they work uh, we did not go through uh, in-depth mathematical intuition of that but at least now it will give you some idea as to how the method works and if there are any parameters that could be controlled to uh, to get a better clustering and we'll do hands-on uh, coding on that in coming videos additionally we looked at how to evaluate the clustering results that we get mm, one catch there though is that because this is unsupervised learning method and we do not we generally would not be having labeled values for the data set so maybe you could try uh, labeling the data sets manually for for practice or i'd suggest using a labeled data set with a target value and then uh, work using only the x value of that as unsupervised case and then comparing those predicted values with the target values uh, to see how the model works for and that that could be a good practice if you have any comments or suggestions please do let me in the comments below uh, if you need any additional information on any of these topics please let me know and i'll try to uh, add that information in future videos uh, again i hope to see you all in the next video please like share and subscribe thank you